I've got a little bit of a situation, if you will. Uh, I've done the uh, Breeding for Profit project with guppies and some java moss and such. And I've been pretty successful at it. And it was going good. But I've recently found out that my local fish store will be closing, unfortunately. Uh, the, it's actually for better reasons than most local fish stores close down. Uh, she just wants to retire. She's been doing it for 40 years or so. And she is done and ready to move on with uh, her retirement. So, um, the guppies I have, though, in my 10-gallon tank, have been breeding like crazy. And my situation is... I'm way overstocked now. Alright, so this is it. This is my 10 gallon. Um, I did only mention a 10 gallon at first, but there also is a 5.5 gallon right next to it. With tons of fry in it. Uh, please excuse the glare. Middle of the day, Florida. It's going to be sunny. Alright, so obviously overstocked in both cases. What am I going to do with all these guppies? Well, luckily it is summer, so I think it's a perfect time to go ahead and start some outside tub, or start a, out, start a outside tub, and go ahead and uh, see if we could raise some of the fry. Um, at least make them large enough to sell. Um, if I can't sell to my local fish store, I've got another option. So what I'm going to do with these adults is I'm going to go ahead and take them to my next uh, local club meeting and what happens at these local club meetings is they'll usually have a speaker but at the end they will also have an auction uh, for any uh, items that you bring in and that they'll sell off to other hobbyists all right so we'll probably bag up some of this java moss uh, the Nubia sprite stay uh, the water sprite we'll go ahead and take that outside in the tub um, for our outdoor fish keeping experiment. It'll be my first time keeping them outside, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, then we got more Java moss over here, so that'll also have to be uh, portioned out because it's getting pretty uh, getting pretty large. It's taking over my fish tank there. Um, even here in this small one, you can see large another large portion of Java moss. Uh, Java moss grows great here, so no issues there. Uh, we'll probably even throw some of these outside to see how they grow as well. Um, they're already juveniles and some of them can be sold, but hey, might as well take them outside, right? Alright, excuse the mess. So this is what I got going here. Um, not 100% sure what all I'm going to use yet, but what I do have, I got a tub, right? This tub is going to be what I'm going to use to hold my fish outside. Uh, I'm going to have about uh what is this about 20 gallons i believe um this tub i've got at a local home depot or lowe's this should not be an issue to find at any of your local uh hardware stores um these these uh i think they're also called laundry tubs some in some cases so you might find them in the laundry area other times you might find them in like the uh what's it called the uh garden the garden section so now we should be set up for water and uh, remember just like any uh, other plate any other aquarium if you have chlorine in your water you want to make sure to be chlorinated uh, in this case what I'm gonna do is just use a water hose connected to my tap at the house and fill up the uh, tub with water and I'm gonna let it sit for about a day to go ahead and come up to temperature um, last thing I want to do is shock the fish uh, by adding them in there um, another thing I'll do before I add the fish is I'll also take, uh, test my water parameters. Um, I already have a, a seated uh, filter media, so I'm going to use a sponge filter that I've been leaving in my, well, that I've had in my sump for about, I don't even know, four or five months. So it's been in there for a while, so it should be seated and ready to go. Um, so, like I said, we'll go ahead and fill this up, uh, add our dechlorinator tomorrow, and then probably add our filter then as well. All right, let's get that going. One other thing I forgot to mention is uh, if it's brand new, you'll probably want to rinse out your tub first. Um, it's probably got a, you, you don't know what it's become in contact with sitting at the store. It could have chemicals or something like that. So you, you want to go ahead and give it a good rinse down before 
you go ahead and add anything in there. So give it a good rinse. the next day and I'm just gonna go ahead and check the temperature I dropped the thermometer in here yesterday uh, so that I could see where we're at before I add any fish in there I want to make sure that the temperature is sustainable for them and it's about the peak sunlight here so let's see if we can see this there we go all right so you can see it's at about uh, let's see we got about 88 90 degrees it's a little hotter than what I want. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and try and throw some uh, that water sprite in here. I'm gonna let it sit another day and then check my temperature again and see what results I get that way. Uh, right now it's a little too hot, um, which guppies are pretty hardy and they could probably survive it. But let's go ahead and give it a shot and give it another day. No need to rush. Well, that didn't go as planned. Uh, so. Here we are about five days later and uh, I got a little sidetracked between uh, Mother's Day and and some rain that happened here in Florida. So uh, water sprite didn't do so well. I was here in the pond. Um, let's take a look. All right, so it all kind of just died off and turned white. Or melted back looks like we may have some new growth here so I don't know maybe it will survive uh, I'm thinking the intense change from from the indoor aquarium to I don't know four hours of sunlight uh, caused it to melt back as well as probably the I don't know maybe it's a slight water parameter change uh, but it's the same tap water so I don't know, maybe it's not getting nutrients because there's no fish in here yet but yeah, looks like we'll have to look for another plan. Uh, I did check the uh, temperature when it was a little hotter and it's really not helping. So we may just have to cover this up a little bit with something, I don't know. We'll figure out another plan as far as regulating the temperature. All right, so we're back. Um, I decided for the temperature problems that the best option would be to just relocate my bin or my tub. Um, uh, it's pretty hot out here. It's probably about 93 degrees, so it should be okay. Um, right now, the temperature on the thermometer reading about uh, 86. So, yeah, definitely a lot better than what it was at the uh, indirect heat over there, even though even if it was only for four hours. All right, now we got that set up. I'm gonna do. Go ahead and use my Seachem Prime. Uh, to go ahead and dechlorinate this water. So, like I said, it's about 20 gallons, so about half a cap full should be enough. Go ahead and pour that in there. Just rinse it off my cap. All right. And uh, at this spot, it's actually better because I'm right here next to my outlet, so. What that means, this is my little makeshift cover for the outlet because I don't want it to, uh, if I leave it open, you can see it's just a flap on there. Once I'm plugged in, uh, I was originally going to run an extension cord over to where I need it. Actually, I don't need this part. Run an extension cord over to where I need it. Um, but this is actually even better. It's right next to it, so I don't need an extension cord. I'll be able to just run my, or plug my air pump directly into it. Um, and this basically covers it from rain. Uh, because if it gets wet, it'll end up uh, doing the surge protection mode and basically turn off. Alright, so got that. And then this is my cycled sponge filter that I had sitting in my uh, my sump of my 75 gallon. So we'll go ahead and add that to this tub as well. Uh, we'll connect the air pump to it. This 
a sponge filter. Simply just connect the air line to here. Sponges go on top of these uh, sections. It'll suck in water through these uh, holes and through the sponge, which, which the sponge will uh, house your beneficial bacteria. All right, and the, the bubbles will lift out the water before it'll come out to this point. And we'll just leave this on the side. I don't even know if this will suction cup to this, but uh, it actually will, even better. So, let's get that going. I'll be back. As I was sitting on my sponge filter, uh, I just realized something kind of interesting that I didn't know about these uh, this eBay type sponge filter that I got, a cheap one. Um, so it's got this tube in here already, which I thought, hey, I'll just connect my airline tube. Well, it's about the same diameter as the airline tube, so it cannot fit over the top of it, which was giving me an issue. So uh, what I decided to do, I don't know if you're supposed to do it, it didn't really come with any instructions, as most things from eBay don't. Just take the tube out. We'll go ahead and slide the airline directly into where that tube was. And we'll put it to our sponge filter. Sounds like we're getting some suction. Alright, just thought I'd share that with you guys. Alright, so here we go. Here's my uh, testing results. I went ahead and tested the pond real quick and I've got uh, zero ammonia. I didn't bother chasing the nitrites. Uh, like I said, I got cycled media, so it should be, uh, when I say media, I mean the sponge on the filter, so. Um, so it should be converting ammonia, any ammonia that was in there to nitrite to nitrate. And I went ahead and uh, thought there might be a little bit of ammonia because there's decaying plants, but it looks like uh, the, uh, the filter is working. The nitrates were already converted. You can see there's a little, it's not quite yellow, it's a little bit between 5 ppm and 0 ppm as far as color wise. So that's a good sign. Looks like it's working. I think we're good to go ahead and add some fish. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and pick out some of these guppies. Uh, like I said, we're probably just going to leave all the adults there because we're probably going to sell those off. And we're going to go ahead and get all these fry out of here. Well, I say all, but we're going to try and catch as many as we can because it's not that easy to grab them. Uh, there's shrimp is there as well, but uh, I'm going to leave those there. And then we'll probably take like uh, half of these juveniles from over here. Sorry for the glare. And uh, go ahead and grow them out in the pond as well. So we went ahead and caught our fry. And we got them all in this bucket. You see there's quite a few in there. I mean there's still quite a few in the, in the tank itself, but this is what I could catch for now. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and leave, let this bucket float in here. See, it's just sitting in the water. And I'm just gonna let it come up to temperature before we add the fish to the bin itself. All right, so we got them released in the tub, and so far it looks good. Uh, no problems. Swing around. What I may try to do is uh, turn the pump off a little bit at night because uh, they should have plenty of oxygen in there. Um, and that way uh, mosquitoes will come in and lay their eggs or have some mosquito larvae in there for them to eat. All right, and then I'll turn it back on, obviously, after a couple hours, a few hours, see how that goes. It's been uh, four days later, and looks like our tub and uh, project is a success. Uh, let's go ahead and look at what we got going on here. I mean, all the fry seem to be alive and thriving. Uh, I did have one random casualty, so I don't know what happened there, but. As you know, in fish keeping, sometimes you're just going to have a death and not know a reason why. So I'm going to go ahead and chalk it up to that unless I start to see multiple deaths happen for some reason. Then uh, I may have to redo some research and figure out what's going on there. But let's just recap what we got here. So we got 20 gallon tub, or approximately 20 gallons. Um, here's my outdoor outlet. Like I said, I did this little homemade cover just to... Uh, stop it from tripping the the safety on there because it will cut off and that's literally just one of these tub, these uh, two and a half gallon drinking water things I just cut it cut in the rear here you can see it's almost the same thing there but yeah I just cut the back off and placed it over I mean uh, 
This works for me because I have siding on my house. Um, you may have a different situation, so you may have to come up with something different. Um, and then for my my air pump, I set it off the ground. Just used some plastic tubs that I had sitting around, and then I covered it up. And it's a little open at the bottom so that I can get some oxygen in through there. All right. Or oxygen it's just so it air I don't want it to overheat essentially is what I'm, what I'm trying to say all right and and that pretty much covers it we got our sponge filter here so the filter has been working great um, like I said it's been four days I'll do my uh, my nitrate ammonia and nitrite uh, test here just to make sure that we're still good and we'll have to I'll probably give you guys an update in a month or so so that was my first experience at shooting a YouTube video and it did have quite a few challenges in there. Uh, first, I was recording off a phone, um, which is with, with, with nowadays uh, with the technology nowadays isn't too bad, but I will hope to upgrade to an actual camera where I can actually get better shots. Uh, another thing is the audio, uh, still working on that, so hopefully we can improve that. I'll, I'll see what we can do there. And then I was also learning editing as well as uh, learning YouTube and how to set up a channel. So I'm very new to this and I, I wanna thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it um, for you taking time out of your day to watch my videos. Um, and please hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. Uh, Cause from here, I'm hoping it only gets better. Thank you.